All right, we're back in. Hey, there's Baja Spencer. Baja Spencer heard me call out his name because he is up right now for his dono. And uh, the list got kind of long again, but that's okay because I'm coming back five days a week here for the summer school session here on Twitch of the Avocado Show. I am Avocado. And if you don't know, you should know why they call me the Avocado. Anyhow, so we are going to do, um, let me see here. Let me get something straight here for Baja Schmenza. Uh, excuse me for one second here. All right. So we're starting on our donos. So here's the deal, guys. I'm going to do five donos, five wheels of cheese, and I'm out of here. This is part two of a pretty long stream. I always say I'm only going to be here for an hour, hour and a half. It ends up being three or four hours. But... You know, and then I throw in stupid things like that burping video that we just did earlier and we have fart redemption. So, you know, thank all of you guys for hanging out. I think there's only about 15 people left hanging out here. I don't know. I can't tell how many people are left. Somebody tell me. All right, guys, let's do this. Baja Smancer wants a band called Nile. Oh, that's it. We're starting it with the metal, guys. Stand by. And uh, let's see here. Are you guys ready for metal to start this one off, guys? This one is going to be a song called Sarcophagus. 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 And yes, I do have that redeem. I do have that redeem there. I see it there for Brexter. So I'll get that in there for sure. Sarcophagus. 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 Oh, that's it. Okay, that's the word. Sorry, guys. <sighs> Speaking was not my first language. <laughs> So let's do this for Baja Smancer. And as I rig this up, let me switch this over really quick. And uh, got a quick one for you guys. How come you park on a driveway but park? Oh, wait, how come you park on a driveway but drive on a parkway? All right, let's go. Sorry. Palamala. Where was this recorded? Year wise.
tempo flexing, this is definitely no click track. And the work on the ride. Jeez. Man, that drummer and the ride work that was going on there in the cymbals was insane. Now, I know that I, I watched uh, some of you guys were saying that it was kind of hard to hear me speaking over it. So, yeah. Every once in a while, uh, what Amin had said, there's sometimes um, there's a normalized rate setting that uh, you, that YouTube might have as a default setting. Sometimes it doesn't catch everything, so it got a little louder than normal. So I'll make sure on the export of this onto the YouTube channel, I'll make a difference on this. Uh, that that growling, uh, that performance. I don't think I've ever heard anything that dark and that it wasn't so much that it was uh, f shredded, fried as much as it was just coming from a part in his throat that was so, so massively dark, you know? It, and it had a very, it had a, like a huge tone to it. Usually from, the, from my experience, when I'm listening to that kind of vocal performance, it, if there's, a, there's a, higher edge, a higher edged fry to it, but this was just so way down there and dark and the sounds of the guitars were great. And it just sounded like the session, like I said, it almost sounds like it was like a no click track session because there was slight, there was a little bit of drifting uh, with the drummer, very, very nuanced and very little, but it all sounded like ready and raw. You know what I'm saying? They just went ahead and hit record. However, there, I don't know if this band has two guitar players uh, if it does, then it makes sense that it could have been a, you know, um, a single pass performance. Uh, but if there wasn't two guitar players, obviously there was some overdubs because there was harmonies that were going on, um, you know, with the guitars and the guitar tones were just fat. It was just, it just seemed to me like a track that didn't get gussied up too much in post. You know what I mean? There wasn't, there wasn't no, any over compression that was going on any way to, you know, try to tone shape anything. It was just... The sound reminds me of one of those guys that walk up to one of those punching bags in an arcade and they hit it and try to get 999 points. It was just that kind of a banging track. So, Bahash Master, thanks, man. I that was it. That was a sick track to listen to. Good way to come back onto the stream too. All right. Okay, next up is Brexter. So Brexter, uh, that was a. This is a tremendous. Donation six thousand nine hundred and sixty nine dollars and sixty nine cents. I appreciate that. <coughs> I'm gonna get a new paint truck, uh, paint job for my uh, skateboard on that. I appreciate it. And uh, he is redeeming forty thousand channel points. That's what this is here. And uh, this particular track is uh, Symphonic Gamer, and I don't know if that's the name of the. Um, oh, this is a long track too, but very well supported with the donation. So let's get ourselves uh, into it here. Um, so what is this? Oh, is this is a live performance. Where is he? Uh, so Brexter, is this uh, live? Are we looking at here? That's, I'm just looking at the thumbnail. That it's actually a symphonic classical performance, which you guys know I love that because... To me, spotting all the musicians as they play and stuff kind of is a little bit more of an addition for me to 
when I'm enjoying listening to music, watching how each musician's dynamic. Actually, this is what I love, and this is, if you guys are with me on this, of course, and we enjoy this piece of music, one of the things I love watching about um, a live symphony uh, or a symphonic performance is not only do we get to maybe, you know, when the camera might highlight the horn section or the reed section, the flutes or leads and strings, and whatever, we get to see the whole art form happen from physical to sound expression. So just how each musician might sway into their notes or, or their eyebrows or their facial expressions change as they perform it because they're feeling it through and through with their instruments. So that's why <laughs> I love watching live performances of symphony, symphonies. <sighs> I might be getting tired already. Symphonies. So let's do this. Brexter, thank you so much. Very generous donation. Coughing up that bazooka million dollars. Let's do this, guys. Let's sit back. This is going to be a bit of a track, but I think it's going to definitely be well worth it. So here we go. Hopefully we'll get a little level boost. You guys are saying this is from Chrono Trigger. You only need one piccolo to cut through all that. <laughs> This is really nice, this, ma this passage. Boop, 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 boop. 
Oh, these little beautiful arrangements in there. My goodness. This is so well arranged. So Brexter, is this all from Chrono Trigger? A double resolve there, that was great. Motif of it. Is that the motif? This is a master class in dynamics.
It's mind-numbing that this is all in a video game. Symphonic unison like this is so wonderful. This is one of those bolder call to action marches, you know. We shall persevere. I like the hi-hat in the background, that's killer. This, is, this seems to me like it would be a character celebration right here. Oh, I just got chicken skin. What do you say to that except thank you <laughs> for that experience? Uh, that was, you know, I can't, I can't, there's nothing that I could say. I don't want to talk during it because I'm loving every minute of it. Um, and then at the end, I really, what is there left to be said except that we just watched something that was absolutely marvelous. This, this, uh, the arrangements were wonderful. Now, because I don't have any knowledge of the original music, and uh, Brexter, is the original music uh, symphonic as well? 
or or uh, I see I don't know if this is like a, uh, a symphonic orchestration of an existing um, piece of work uh, so it's all synths in it okay so then this is all synths in the game and then this is um, the orchestrations of it first of all to actually what an ode to a composer of a video game that a symphonic orchestra conductor arranger composer orchestrator would take on that task uh, that means it's an incredibly powerful uh, piece of music to that conductor and orchestrator um, and uh, but now that I know that uh, this is a symphonic translation, if you would, of the original, I think one of the things that I really, really enjoyed about this um, is, and I had mentioned it earlier, Amon had mentioned it earlier, it was the intense, uh, was the dynamics of the performance through this 13-minute piece. You know, usually in classical pieces of music, you know, these suites and these longer, you know, movements and stuff, aren't as robust necessarily in dynamics per se. I mean, no, that, I mean, there are classical compositions that are, but in this case, I really enjoyed how the orchestrator um, and, re and the rearranger, if you would, um, but really, I, I don't know if the dynamics match the dynamics in the synth tracks, if maybe there was a, a, a very close pull to that, but in of itself, I just loved sitting here and just watching this with you guys, because I just love what you, and once again, watching the musicians getting into their pieces and stuff like that that's always that's this is the one thing that i think classical music um when we go to these performances if anybody's ever gone uh you know if you haven't gone sometime in your life i hope you get the opportunity to go to a live classical performance lately there's been symphonic orchestras uh or symphonies around the world that are actually doing movie scores to the movies playing in the background you know, so, and I know there's a, a few of them that have licensed out game music. <clears throat> but if you ever get an opportunity sometime in your life to go see a live orchestra and just feel that coming out, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's experience, it's unmatched. You know, so, so Brexter, thank you so much. That was so, so, so cool. Okay, stand by for a second. Let me see what I got here. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, ho, hang on, hang on, ho. Okay, let me go to SB. SB, we are on to you. Are you here, SB? Let's see, sampled from the, from the OG soundtrack. Okay, uh, yeah, so SB, you're up next, but I'm going to do what Brexter, I want to just call that up there just for a second, right? So, which, if I was to call up one of these tracks just to hear it on the game, Chrono Trigger, what would be the title of it? I'm not going to listen to the whole thing, I just want to catch a uh, wild scene or something like that. Uh, let's see what that is. I just want to hear it. Orchestral remix. Nope, I want the original. The wind scene. Is this it? Yes, I guess it's this one. Let me just hear what this is. Nope. See if there's something here a little more. Hang on. How about this one? So this is the original. Okay. Wow. 
Okay, now I can really appreciate the work the orchestrator did and uh, the loving care that it took in the arrangements and the dynamics. Um, I fully um, got now. Now that I've heard this, I have a full appreciation to it. But not to say that this is not good. It's just such a step up. And like I said earlier, what what does it take for a symphony and its conductor and its orchestrator and stuff to embrace this and say, let's do this? You know, um, who knows? Maybe, maybe half the people in the orchestra played the game at one point. And was like, yeah, let's do this. You never can tell, right? They all look fairly young. All right, here we go. Let me get back to SB here. Uh, wants a band called Religua. Religua? And it's a progressive band. The name of the track is A Flower. Um, so you're obsessed with the band, huh? And this one's been on repeat for you? Well, good. So we're going to bring it here, and we're going to repeat it for you one more time, except this time I'm going to make noise. What is it? Rel Relica. Relica. Okay. All right, SB, this is for you. Let's go. I have a problem with something I said. I pushed it too far as I became possessed. Lately, I've been a stranger. Put so much on the line. Wow. Walk on glass in the morning so I can rectify the night. Great lyric right there. Gives you half a second to reset because something nasty is probably about to happen. Dreaming of sunlight, condemned to the dirt, washing my hands of the sins I have taught and those you learned, and taking some time underground now to salvage the petals I burned. Oh, this is insidious. To me is salvation to you, then I'll take it, I'll take it, I'll take it. Now watch me. cream man what a way to end a track that is so dark that is so gnarly here's what i love about this track uh the guitar tones are insane the musicianship's out outrageous this is like really like as contemporary cutting edge engineering as well and going on with the sculpting of the sounds and everything like this freaking phenomenal um the hook in this track is so unforgiving yet beautiful if that makes any sense coming from such a dark heavy you know the riffage at the beginning where she's singing and stuff in the verses and stuff by the by the time she gives birth to that hook 
you almost feel like there's this painful glory in it and the vocals and the background vocals were just unreal. I loved everything about it. I'm, I'm really surprised and very uh, like taken aback on, on, the, on song construction, but it doesn't matter. I mean, we're all used to listening to songs that have three or four hooks in it, in and out, you know, in it to a minute to win it, you know, style of, of pop contemporary culture composition uh, with the hook. But that hook was so powerful and so strong that when we got down to that little breakdown, where I, I thought I was going to get a jump scare because that's happened to me quite a few times, but we went into that very ethereal, ambient, you know, purgatory space where she had those very soft vocals. In the very back, I can hear this lo-fi thumpiness just barely in there, you know, for what my headsets could pick up in, in that tone range. And then I'm, I'm going, okay, it's going to hit, it's going to hurt, it's going to hit, it's going to hurt, what's going to happen here? And I'm thinking that we're going to get into maybe a pre-chorus or something or a bridge into the hook. <clears throat> Instead, they nail us with, I, I guess this is what, I, I hear Nick Nocturnal and all these guys call this a, a, the breakdown or the break or something like that where it's just nothing but the the lowest, most visceral, I don't know if you call it thaw sounding um, kind of heaviness. But that's like a break. And then usually you want to close up with the hook or something like that. But this just ended like that. And that was just absolutely insane. I think I think the dosage, if you would, in that hook was powerful enough to get you through that kind of insidious, purgatory, ethereal, ambient gooiness that happened after the last hook. To, to, you know, balls it out like that. That was a great freaking listen. Oh, geez. So well worth it. Absolutely so well worth it to listen. And thank you, SB, for, for uh, dropping that on us for dang sure. And I'm like, oh, well, it's coming out of Nuclear Blast. So, of course, they're staying true to the brand. Uh, this was some powerful, powerful, powerful track. So, very good. And I, and I can understand why you're playing this so many times, too. You know, because the... the um, the, ma the, the final mix and master quality of this doesn't hurt. The power doesn't hurt. So you could probably turn this up and grind this through your speakers, be it in your headsets, your buds, or at home, or in your car, and the continuity of the tones just punch you in the chest without it being too overbearing. That's what I got through these little headsets of mine. By the way, the AKG 240s. Sorry. <laughs> I had to do that. All right, uh, let's go for one more, and then I'm going to do a couple wheel of cheese, and I got to bail. Um, <clears throat> hey, uh, Psycho Jago 3 Circus. Well, welcome to the stream. Good to have you uh, dropping by here. So, uh, catching me towards the end of my stream, but glad to have you here. And everybody say hi to him. He's our first time uh, dropping in and saying, How's it? Let's give him the, you know, let's give him the chat welcome there, guys. Okay, let me see. Uh, once again, before I do this last track on the dono, before I go and hit a couple of wheel of cheese, uh, you guys know how this rolls. Uh, I've seen some donos uh, come in, some very considerate ones especially. Um, I'm going to be doing this five days a week. I will be back again tomorrow just to continually catch up on all, all of this. So if, you don't get, if I don't get to you uh, tonight, obviously, then um, we're working through it. But I, I feel blessed that I have people hanging out with me and... Um, especially when you're boosting and, and some of people being very generous. I can't thank you guys enough. So uh, so I have one more here that I am going to uh, pull here through. And I am going to do Jake Strix. Jake, Jake Strix? Are you here in the house still, Jake Strix? Uh, this is a movie. Uh, there you are. How are you? Oi, oi. Thank you for hanging out. All right. Let's see what I got here. This is, is, is the name of the band house or you say it's a movie. So the movie's called house maybe. No. Anyhow, uh, this is, I guess, pop track. This is called love. Yes. You're still on the list park pal. Okay. Stand by. Okay. So here we go. All right. Trippy. 
big smile on my face. I'm like, yeah. Some good old fashioned traditional recording and everything here. Let's go. Look at that sneaky little move. Soft strings coming in with the voicings there. Warm, supportive. there for me. Nice bass tone. But the piano playing reminds me of that Motley Crue pattern. Now, this has a little bit of a Janis Joplin vibe here. That was so badass. Everybody was popping in here with about five, six, seven different type of influences from the 70s. Very, so well recorded. Now, you guys are saying that this is a track from a song. 
Um, I mean, uh, I'm sorry. It's a song from a movie. This was put on YouTube 12 years ago, but how old is this movie? I mean, artwork, not, not, uh, notwithstanding, it seems like, oh, 1977. It makes all the sense in the world then. That's why the music sounds so great. I'm sorry. I'm just that guy. You know, I don't want to sound like the old fart going, when music used to sound as, no, it's just, uh, yes, nostalgically pulling. And for all of you that chimed in with the different kind of influences that you heard in there and the couple that I said, but everything about that performance from top to bottom was a performance. And I really love that. That bass, though, whoever that engineer was, he's the winner. He is the winner because that bass sounded great. And it was up. Did you guys hear that? That did it do. I thought I did. Everybody's looking at the corner of their computer. <laughs> Everybody look to the right of their computer to see if, if Microsoft is saying, ready when you are to restart your system. Bastards. The, the, mods, are trying to, uh, the mods next time around are going to get me to turn that thing off. I hate that thing. I'll wake up one night and next morning I wake up and the whole thing has is, is been reset and I got to go in and just delete a shit ton of bloatware. Anyhow, thank you so much, Jake. That was a great listen. I appreciate it. All right, guys, two more tracks to go. We're going for the wheel of cheese on this. Uh, I do have at least, uh, you know, 18 folks there with donations here that are hovering. So please do not despair. Um, tomorrow I'll be picking up with uh, Linkinski, Park Pal, Dal 97. Um, let's see, Video Games Art, Retro Gamer, Doc Doom, La Cremosa, Makuza, Double A, Humboldt Farm. You guys are all here. You know, it's just uh, trying not to overburn myself out. Grace Ravioli, Cairo, the Kebab. <laughs> Look at that, Kebab Seller is already back with another one. Purple Pikmin Eater, and of course, Ice Hat. So you guys are on the list. Thank you for just uh, being on cruise control. But now that I'm going five days a week, you know I'm going to hit it. Probably in about two weeks, there's not going to be any more to do because everybody would have gotten their stuff done. And we're all just farting around. All right, guys. Uh, we're now just going to go uh, one, uh, two wheel of cheese left. One we're going to do is going to be, uh, let's do the noob wheel of cheese. And um, let's see what we got here. How many cheesies do we have left here? Type in I'm a cheesy if you're still here. I'm a cheesy. Are you still here? Let's see if uh, Or if you see your name here, maybe I'm a cheesy. I'm a cheesy <laughs> How are you patty cakes? All right, here we go guys. This is the uh, queso nuevo queso mal pedo Here we go. We is all a cheesy. Hey alchemist. How are you and bone have James as well? Coming in here, say, how's it? Gummy bear! All right, here we go. Where it stopped, nobody knows. Oh, 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 oh. Ha-ha! <laughs> Chunky iguana. I wish I was in Tijuana, eating barbecued iguana. Okay, who remembers what song that came from? Does anybody remember what song that was? Ready? Doesn't anybody remember it? Come on, you got to give me the title of that one. I wish I was in Tijuana. Yep, there it is. <laughs> one donut in for the win. The Mexican radio. I'm on a Mexican radio. A ding, ding. One donut. Come on, you got to be born in the 1900s, right? <laughs> Either that or you got a, you got a real sick, uh, rich uh, palette of, of sounds there. A good broad... Uh, 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 playlist there. Wall of Voodoo, yes. <laughs> okay, I lost myself. Chunky Iguana, here we go. I got myself all scattered. That was one of my favorite songs. I used to love getting baked to that song. Or if I was in the middle of getting baked or cutting seeds or whatever, I'd sit there and be going, oh my God, I got to stop what I'm doing. I wish I was. I'm sorry, that's when I was younger, back in the 1900s. I'm good now. Okay, guys, we're going to be uh, doing this band. I am familiar with the name of this band. I always mispronounce it. This is from Chunky Iguana. This is New Jabez. New Jabez. And let's see what we got here. Imaginary Folklore. Yes, we got to say hi to um, 
one donut. Everybody say aloha to one donut for also, that's his first message here. So let's just give him the, the how's it and welcome. Okay, so here we go. This is a new job is imaginary, imaginary, flip flu, imaginary folklore from our Twitch friend, Chunky Iguana. Okay, guys, let's do this all right. <laughs> Here we go. Fru-fru, emojis, heat. Oh, I love that piano has a delay on it. Love that.
I was about to say, somebody move the needle over. Those of you who ever had regular recordings, <laughs> waiting for the tea, tea. That was such a rinse. That was such a laid back, chill rinse, man. I just loved not only the tone of her voice, but I've done this a couple times in some past recordings. I don't do it often. Uh, it's designed specifically for the effect that you get. But when you add delay to piano and you play the way this guy just played, I, I guess somebody said that maybe this was new job is playing the piano. God, it's so beautiful, so perfect. And I just, you know, you guys have known this. I've said this quite a few times on my streams, just, you know, this part of my life where I'm at, you know, the end of the rainbow, however many minutes, hours, days, years I have left to live, I find myself really getting into this kind of that more of a chill kind of vibe and just letting you sink and marinate into something. It kind of like unlatches a couple things in the brain for you to chill, you know, whether, whether you're influenced by, you know, whatever it is you might be influenced by, you know, the drink, the smoke, the, the hot dote. dote um, even if you don't need to be influenced by that. It, you just sit there and for some reason, if you just let this saturate inside your brain and marinate, kind of unlocks and kind of levels up a little bit in, into this kind of tranquil vibe for myself. I can only speak for myself. Um, I couldn't tell. The more and more I listened to it, though, it sounded like the bass was a line through the, through the uh, you know, was a live played track through it. I thought maybe it was part of a, a loop, which was that string that we heard at the very end of just that string pad. If that was maybe just a sampled loop that was being held down or something. <coughs> But it, I also love the um, la, 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 you know, all the, all the voices in the background. It's like such a perfect track to just, you know, stare up to the ceiling and, and count the whatever it is that's on your ceiling. <laughs> How many times a fan spinning around per second or something. Ah, that was so cool. Okay, one more, guys. One more. We're going to be doing... Um, uh, queso pobre. This is the biggest wheel of cheese, guys. You guys have all been hanging out for this. Uh, once again, before I do this, I want to thank everybody for coming out. I'll be back again tomorrow, probably about 2 o'clock my time, which makes it 5 o'clock Pacific Standard Time. Uh, also, if you're new here, I know there's been some new people that have come by here. Anything that you may have missed, if you put it on the wheel of cheese, I have this YouTube channel where I drop the VODs on the YouTube channel. And unless I get blocked, those will always be there for you to hang out and enjoy as well. All right, guys, here we go. The final wheel of cheese coming in. And uh, so here goes we. Good luck to everybody. Let me get rid of uh, Chunky iguana and i gotta tell you too i've had some incredible luck so far with the wheel of cheese selections as well for those of you who are taking the time to hang out and listen and enjoy you guys are dropping some great music and remember it's all kinds of music you know cultural classical jazz fusion metal everything international i'm here for it okay so here we go guys oh that is Poverty cheese right there. Okay, guys. Are we ready? Here we go. Oh, oh, oh. Okay. Crush a Kremling. Crush a Kremling. I believe this is uh, the very first time I've seen that name here. So let's see what Crush a Kremling wants. This is always a great uh, surprise. Uh, just like what SB seen, SB has said, is that he uh, found some great music uh, through the Wheel of Cheese as well. You know, this wouldn't have ever happened like in the old traditional days of, uh, of radio per se. You know, you had to stick to a genre. You had to, you know, this, this is like a, 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 tra a traditional Heimlich maneuver and being able to do this in, in my little, the avocado show here on Twitch. Okay, hang on for a second. Where is that? I'm looking, looking. Oh, here we go. This is a band. This band is called, stand by. La Chique. Is it La Chique? Um, or La Chique. 
And the name of it is Dragon Fruit Salad. By the way, guys, I love dragon fruit. We have dragon fruit here in Hawaii, grows around here. So uh, anyhow, this is from Crusha Kremlin. The name of the song is Dragon Fruit Salad. The name of the band and the artist is La Chique. I think I may have pronounced that right. We're about to find out. All right, here we go. What a way to end the stream. Come on, everybody, get light one up in the uh, in the chat. Some dancing emojis. Let's go. I love this. Hey, look. I got my mango. He got his mango. I'll use that for my thumbnail. <laughs> the low hanging fruit. I love this. this is so, 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 this is a hybrid 70s Motown, you know, funk. Go, man, go. Double A, man, you got jokes. Ring arrangements is what pulls it back into the 70s and keeps it locked there. <laughs> Roller skate music, perfect. That's exactly it. Skating backwards. Footage of Venice Beach in the 80s. All the guys and the girls are wearing dolphin shorts. Need more cowbell. More track. <laughs> oh, we're going to filter out. Filter fade. That was badass. What a great way to end the stream, man. That was so kick ass. Gosh, this is the wheel of cheese. Sometimes I'm telling you, 
I don't know. I think it was Vex that said earlier that this was one hell of a stream that we've had uh, with like the eclectic tastes and, you know, just having so many great tracks coming in here. And um, God, I, I'm just so elated to have the opportunity to listen to all this music that without this journey, I would have never done it. I'd be just sitting out on the beach turning into a raisin or something. I don't know, but this has just been fantastic. It makes me feel so alive, too. I don't know about you guys. When you sit through a stream as long as I do one, um, I know that by the end of the streams, a lot of times I am kind of burnt from listening and stuff like that, but I feel like I've got completely refilled with, with motivation and just... You know, we search for such new things right now in the world. What's going on? Things are crazy. Things are dark sometimes and all that. But we're just sitting here and we just constantly get served up as as a gang here. Just all this new music experience. And even though the some, some music isn't for everybody, you know, the, what I love about what we have here is, as a group is that, yeah, the, the metal might not be for this or the jazz might not be for this person, but you sit through it, you know, and you enjoy it a little bit to the best of your abilities, you know. Even if you're just hanging on there going, oh, my God, i got to listen to this, but maybe my next song is a Wheel of Cheese. doesn't matter. We get exposed to it, and uh, that's just how she goes. Anyhow, guys, I want to thank you guys so much once again. Uh, I did read off that list. I still have quite a few donuts left. I will be back tomorrow at between 2 and 2.30. Um, and uh, don't forget that YouTube channel. Go ahead and check that out. And uh, if, you know, for the VODs. Everybody that's been here, thank you so much. It's so good to see everybody hanging out. <coughs> I love the fact that we had a good handful of brand new um, people coming in in the chat, too. And uh, just saying, how's it? And aloha and everything. And uh, so that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. Uh, I'm going to go finish up. My sugar pops. Is that what they're called? Sugar pops? Corn pops? Or something like that? And uh, my mango's not quite ripe yet, so hopefully my mango, the lower fruit that's dangling, will be ready for tomorrow. And uh, tomorrow, though, I think I'm going to be making some cheese tomato. Um, what's the name of that? A cheese tomato olive oil. And uh, vinegar, kind of, uh, you know, what you call it? What's that vinegar? The dark, the dark vinegar. It's a little sweet vinegar. What's it called? That you usually do when you have buffalo caprisi. Yeah, kind of a caprisi. But there's that uh, balsamic, yes. I have a whole new thing of balsamic. <laughs> Every time I look at that, I, I kind of nut up. No pun. Oh, shit. Okay, that's my, that's my sign that I got to dig out. <laughs> that's just horrible, horrible, horrible. All right, everybody, I'm on double A, SB, Patty Cakes, Vex, Ivy Creep, Kairu, take care, Square Meal. Good to see you, Square Meal. I didn't see you earlier. Um, uh, let me see. Brexter, thank you so much. Blue Jay Barkley, have a wonderful day. Big Mighty, my, my Tenya as well for you. Psycho, thanks for coming out and hanging out. Come back, Ming. Uh, K Master, thank you as well. I'm on cheers. All right, guys, I'm signing out. I'm going to do this. See, now I know exactly. I remember yesterday, I signed out perfectly from the Avocado Show. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, got to stop my hard drive.